Okay, hello everyone. Today I want to talk about delivery drones and I'm here with Gavin Gomez from Dronamix. Hi Gavin. Hi, really good to see you. Thank you. Tell me a little bit more about this amazing drone that we see behind us. Well, it's an aircraft that uh, travels two and a half thousand kilometers at 200 kilometers an hour uh, and it's uh, it first world's, uh, we're the world's first drone airline. Uh, it's a terrific uh, proposition, same day delivery for everyone everywhere on the planet. Very good, and the size is like a medium-sized aircraft, so why, have you, why is it the size it is? Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, about just a little bit bigger than a Cessna, uh, and the reason it's that size is we've optimized it for the delivery of cargo. It fits what basically fits in the back of a delivery van. So it's, it's optimized for that size, which means you can take it straight from a van to the same van that delivers to your door, to the aircraft, back to another van, and eliminate all of the hub and spoke that's in traditional logistics. At the moment, it uses traditional propeller technology and engines. Where do you see this going in the future? Yeah, we use traditional uh, uh, propeller technology and engines because it gives us the range of two and a half thousand kilometers. It does only burn 5.8 liters per hour or per, per 100 kilometers, which means it's the same as your car, your small car. But in the future, we see this uh, as a hydrogen uh, technology play. And we've got two programs uh, looking at both fuel cell and gaseous technology. One with Cranfield University right here in the UK. Very good. Where, where do you see the application of this technology in the future? Well, I think it, the application is everywhere. Uh, it allows people who have never had same-day delivery before to get same-day delivery of not just their e-commerce parcels, which everyone thinks about, but think of urgent medical uh, care, urgent spare part delivery, those kind of things. Uh, initially, though, we see it servicing island communities and, and remote and, and indigenous communities, uh, but eventually we see this as, as reaching many places on the planet. At the moment, there's a big regulatory challenge around getting drones flying. Where are you with this at the moment? Yeah, there is a big regulatory challenge. Uh, we take the highest standards. So our, our aircraft operate is operated by commercial pilots. Uh, we operate in airspace that is commercially regulated. Uh, we will fly under instrument flight rules. So we operate at the highest standards, just like with uh, every other airline in the world, and, and, and we'll continue to do that. We're working with all the regulators though to ensure that this kind of technology can fly safely in the skies around. Yeah, and I guess if you have any drone to fly, it will be cargo drones and not people, right? Yeah, I think that uh, public acceptance seems to be much more, uh, I guess, forthcoming with a cargo drone. And we think that we can do that safely and prove that unmanned aircraft technology or remotely piloted aircraft is something that's it's viable for everybody. So at the moment, you need pilots on the ground to fly these aircrafts. Um, how do you see this going in the future? Do you think AI, autonomous technology will fly these drones? Yes, I think uh, today we use a pilot at both origin and destination to fly the aircraft. In the future we see less pilots per aircraft and perhaps one pilot operating up to 15 aircraft. We also see, see that with the combination of AI technology that the drones will be able to reposition themselves and be flexible around demand. So when the demand becomes greater in one area, you'll get more aircraft and more capacity and when it becomes less, they'll reposition to elsewhere. Very good. Thank you very much, Gavin. Awesome. Thank, Thank you.